Zach McPherson says goodbye to the Philadelphia fans. We got some surprising cuts, and Zach was definitely one of them, in my opinion. CD Lamb got his bag, and Cowboys fans are cheering for the wrong things, if you ask me. Let's get into it. Sir, yes, sir. Lord Brunson back at you with the back at you, and I am the best reporting on the Eagles, man. Before we get into the meat and potatoes, I got to let you know this video was brought to you by Print Champs. Big Print Champs in the building, man. Y'all are missing out on opportunities for some of your favorite merchandise that I dropped. Also, the Hurt Season version 2 hats are available. Ski Mask Howie shirts, things of that nature, man. Listen, Ski Mask Howie deserve a couple sales. Nobody's doing contracts like the Philadelphia Eagles, man. We're going to get into that in a minute. But yeah, man, let's talk about it, man. So CeeDee Lamb got his bag. And you know, I'm happy. I'm happy for Sidarius. I'm happy for Lamb Chop. You know what I'm saying? I know I was trolling the Cowboys for a, a minute about CeeDee Lamb and him not getting his bag or whatever the case may be. But you know, real Eagles fans, we knew that that was inevitable. We knew that CeeDee Lamb was going to get paid. There's no way around it. You know what I mean? You can't have a guy show up like that and not pay him especially at a you know specialty position or at a, a skill position i should say like cd lamb we knew cd lamb bag was coming why do cowboys fans act like we was anticipating cd lamb not getting paid that's not what none of that was about that was just about us poking fun at y'all that was just about us laughing at y'all because y'all laughing stock it wasn't that we didn't think cd was going to get paid that would just be ludicrous because cd lamb is going to get paid clearly he got paid the thing about it is this Howie Roseman is able to guarantee two top 100 wide receivers at $171 million. That's great GM, and if you ask me. Now, CeeDee Lamb got his $100 million fully guaranteed. That's cool, but it comes while you may need a quarterback next year. It comes while Micah Parsons might end up being the highest paid defender in NFL history. So that's why, the, that's why it looks a little iffy. Like, CeeDee Lamb bag was inevitable, but would CeeDee Lamb leave some crumbs on the table for a Dak Prescott? Hell no, absolutely not. Look at the numbers that he took. Listen, when people leave crumbs on the table, Table, you got to refer to a Jalen Waddle deal or you got to refer to a Devontae Smith deal. That is what you call leaving something on the table so you can still be able to build the roster. I don't think CeeDee Lamb did that at all. CeeDee Lamb ain't have nobody in mind but CeeDee Lamb and that's okay. When it's time to get your first extension, that's what you're supposed to do. But teams that have coaches in place like the Philadelphia Eagles, these type of teams have guys that have a mindset of team first. Why would CeeDee Lamb put the team first when they made him wait all summer for his back? He missed camp. They could have got ahead of this and saved some M's for real, for real. But no, they drug it out. Almost made the man play on the fifth-year option, so why should CeeDee Lamb be inclined to look out for the team? No, CeeDee got to look out for CeeDee. CeeDee got to get his first bag, and that's totally understandable. The Dallas Cowboys are headed for some dark days. They're headed for some dark days. Even if you do pay Dak Prescott, what's going to happen to all of the, the little outlier positions? Like, what are you going to do with linebacker? What are you going to do with, 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 with the defensive line? You're going to keep trying to fill holes with guys like Limbaugh, Joseph, and things of that nature? Listen, I don't want to dwell too much on what they got going on. We know that they are a shitty organization. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, a player who deserved to get paid got paid. And that's we got to just leave it at that. We got to see how the chips fall. It's a spectacle. It's a spectacle. I love watching it. I love looking at it. I love laughing at it. Oh, I love laughing at the Dallas Cowboys. I'm ashamed. I'm upset. And I'm disappointed in you. Because I heard you running around here looking for... <laughs> I heard, I heard you looking for a new book this season. When you know I've been telling you that Bet US was the answer for weeks now. I've been telling you that. Up to 125% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits, up to $2,000. 200% crypto deposit bonus. So if you're in the cryptocurrency space, why would you not do this? Fastest payouts in the industry. Fast and easy deposit and withdrawal process. Check out my BetUS link in the description below. 24-7 personalized service. 365 days a year. Live wagering on all major games. Best betting variety in the business. Get 10% back twice a year on your net losses. Just nobody's doing that. And did you know BetUS could also give you your very personalized account manager? As soon as you set up that account, somebody going to be ringing your jack asking, how may I serve you? Again, 125% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits up to $2,000. 2,000% crypto deposit bonus, fast and easy withdrawal process, fastest payouts in the industry. Get with BetUS. Use the link below. Don't make me ask you again. 
Win some bread. Now, the Philadelphia Eagles have until tomorrow at 4 o'clock to get this roster down to 53 players. The regular season is fast approaching. You know, and Zach McPherson, the guy that we drafted, you know what I mean? A guy that we thought that could potentially be a difference maker, dealt with some injuries. And I guess, in my opinion, he headlines, you know, um, the list of guys that was cut today. Zach McPherson headlines that. The second guy would probably be Sean Stevenson, undrafted free agent. Um, the cousin of Joey Porter Jr., I believe. I guess he would be second. Will Greer, a fourth QB. We never was going to keep him. An outside linebacker, a defensive back, things of that nature. So we knew who was going to make this team. You know what I mean? And we knew that all of these, none of these are surprise cuts. But somebody got a headline the first wave of cuts. More cuts are going to happen tomorrow, obviously, because I think we got another 30 players that we got to uh, get rid of. But, you know, it's that time of the season, man. It's that time of the season, man. You got to... You got to be ready, man. You got to be ready for it, man. It's going it's going to be some guys that you wanted to make the roster that's not going to make the roster. It's going to be some guys that that make the roster that you didn't think should make the roster. You know, I'm worried about a Eli Ricks. Um I'm worried about a couple people that I feel like a Ben Van Summerin. You know what I mean? I think these are great death pieces for the Philadelphia Eagles, but it's all about clearing um I, it's so weird. My whole neighborhood comes out and walks like around the same time. It's, you know, you gotta, you gotta worry about the guys that's gonna fall through the cracks. You gotta hold that in consideration as well. So the guys that don't clear waivers, they're gonna end up in some different uniforms and the Philadelphia Eagles are gonna be, you know, some great, you know, recipients of guys that don't clear waivers for other rosters and things of that nature. We got two holes that I feel like we gotta fill. We got two holes that I feel like we got to fill or that we need some depth at. I'm looking at safety depth. I'm looking at edge rusher depth. So, yeah, man, you you, you got you to gotta be able to do what you got to do. And Howie Roseman is the best general manager in the football. He's looking at guys. He's looking at the waiver wire. I trust our scouting department. I trust the guys that have to make these decisions to make these decisions. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm not worried about it. I'm confident that the Philadelphia Eagles will find a gem from guys that are cut. And you know what I mean? And guys that won't make the roster. That's just what we do. We do it every single year. You know what I mean? It could be a veteran. I'm hoping it's some veterans. We need more veterans on this football team. We need some some Vic Fangio disciples. We need some guys that understand, you know what I mean? That understand what Vic Fangio brings to the table and things of that nature. And they're already starting with the lies, man. They're already starting with the theories and 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 Jalen Hurts is having trouble with the blitz. They coming out with BS online and guys are going to run with that. But at the end of the day, it's us. It's up to us to go out here and know what's really, really real. It's up to us. They were saying, uh, I seen on a pro, uh, on a, some type of program, somebody brought this to my attention this morning on Lunchtime with the Bullies, that they running around here with the narrative saying that Vic Fangio's defense is hard to, to, to get down. Uh, it, 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 it's hard to play. It's hard to memorize and stuff like that. I'm like, come on, man. These guys are pros. So you're telling me that just because these guys wear midnight green, just because these guys wear midnight green, they're going to have a hard time diet. They're going to have a hard time reading Vic Fangio playbook. Come on, man. These guys know where they're supposed to be. We're not running with them type of narratives no more, man. You know what I mean? Y'all going to respect us as a good football team, or we're going to show you something. We're going to beat it out you. It is pause. You know what I mean? Let me know what you think in the comments, though. What are the